Language Cert International English for speakers of other languages, Communicator Level B2. Practice Paper 2. Listening Part 1. You will hear some short conversations. You will hear each conversation twice. Choose the correct answer to complete each conversation. Number one, number one. I must get the car serviced soon. Anything wrong with it? No, just needs a regular check. I must get the car serviced soon. Anything wrong with it? No, just needs a regular check. Number two, number two. Great film, perfect for kids. But you enjoyed it too. Yeah. Actually, it would suit any age. Great film. Perfect for kids. But you enjoyed it too. Yeah. Actually, it would suit any age. Number three. Number three. Oh, look at that! There, out of the train window. Oh, you've missed it. Shh! I'm trying to read my newspaper. It can't be more interesting than what I've just seen. Look at that! There, out of the train window. Oh, you've missed it. Shh! I'm trying to read my newspaper. It can't be more interesting than what I've just seen. Number four, number four. I feel really sorry for Josie and Mike. Why? What's the matter? They can't find anywhere nearby they can afford to rent. I feel really sorry for Josie and Mike. Why? What's the matter? They can't find anywhere nearby they can afford to rent. Number five, number five. I don't want to leave the packing till tomorrow. But we've got plenty of time. We've got to be at the airport by midday, you know. I don't want to leave the packing till tomorrow. But we've got plenty of time. We've got to be at the airport by midday, you know. Number six, number six. This article's about that actress you love. Ooh, what does it say? Says she was first discovered in our local theatre. This article's about that actress you love. Ooh, what does it say? Says she was first discovered in our local theatre.
number seven, number seven. So, what do you think you can bring to the role? Well, I'm hardworking, loyal, always on time. Hmm, not always. So, what do you think you can bring to the role? Well, I'm hardworking, loyal, always on time. Hmm, not always. That is the end of part one. Listening, part two. You will hear some conversations. You will hear each conversation twice. Choose the correct answers for each conversation. Conversation one. Mr. Price, do come in. Thanks. Right. Do you want the whole place decorated? No, just the living room for the moment. A lot depends on your estimate for the job. And have you had any thoughts about what colour you want? Well, I've been thinking of blue, but I'm not entirely certain. I hoped you might be able to give me some suggestions. Hmm. It's quite a dark room, isn't it? How about a pale yellow? It would lighten the room no end and go well with your carpet, too. Do you know... I hadn't considered that, but I think you're right. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you about what would be best for the ceiling. Mr Price, do come in. Thanks. Right. Do you want the whole place decorated? No, just the living room for the moment. A lot depends on your estimate for the job. And have you had any thoughts about what colour you want? Well, I've been thinking of blue, but I'm not entirely certain. I hoped you might be able to give me some suggestions. Hmm. It's quite a dark room, isn't it? How about a pale yellow? It would lighten the room no end and go well with your carpet, too. Do you know? I hadn't considered that, but I think you're right. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you about what would be best for the ceiling. Now, look at the questions for conversation two. Conversation two. So, Paul, why did you want to see me? I think you know perfectly well, Gina. I assume it was you who decided to promote Leah to head of department. It wasn't just my decision, Paul, as you know. But yes, we thought she was the right person for the role. Time will tell. How can you say that when she's hardly been here five minutes? And before the summer, you told me that you'd back my application for the post. That's the thing that really gets to me, the way you've changed your mind. Well, I'm sorry you feel like that, but situations change, Paul. We all know that. And Leah is exceptional. We're lucky to have her. I can understand how you feel, but I hope you'll be able to work together. So, Paul, why did you want to see me? I think you know perfectly well, Gina. I assume it was you who decided to promote Leah to head of department. It wasn't just my decision, Paul, as you know. But yes, we thought she was the right person for the role. Time will tell. How can you say that when she's hardly been here five minutes? And before the summer, you told me that you'd back my application for the post. That's the thing that really gets to me, the way you've changed your mind. 
Well, I'm sorry you feel like that, but situations change, Paul. We all know that. And Leah is exceptional. We're lucky to have her. I can understand how you feel, but I hope you'll be able to work together. Now, look at the questions for conversation three. Conversation three. Wow! That was just totally amazing, wasn't it? What? Standing outside in the rain and having to pay £20 for the privilege? And why did they have to play so loud? Oh, come on, don't be like that. The first half was excellent, especially the last three numbers. The guy playing bass guitar was brilliant. In fact, I thought they all were. Well, I'm sorry, but I thought they were terrible. And the sound system, too. Whatever possessed you to bring me along? Twenty pounds? What a waste. Oh, for goodness sake, stop going on. I'll give you back the money if you want. I thought you'd enjoy it. Now, please, don't spoil it for me. Wow! That was just totally amazing, wasn't it? What? Standing outside in the rain and having to pay £20 for the privilege? And why did they have to play so loud? Oh, come on, don't be like that. The first half was excellent, especially the last three numbers. The guy playing bass guitar was brilliant. In fact, I thought they all were. Well, I'm sorry, but I thought they were terrible. And the sound system, too. Whatever possessed you to bring me along? Twenty pounds? What a waste. Oh, for goodness sake, stop going on. I'll give you back the money if you want. I thought you'd enjoy it. Now, please, don't spoil it for me. That is the end of part two. Listening, part three. You will hear someone talking. You will hear the person twice. Complete the information. Write short answers of one to five words. Hello, everyone. Now, I'd like you all to listen carefully to the following information about the social activities programme for this coming week. That's from the 5th to the 11th of October. Sorry, I can't give you the programme as usual, because the photocopy is not working this morning. So, if you don't mind, can you all take down notes, please? OK, let's start with Monday. As you know, we planned a barbecue but the forecast's not looking good, so we're having a quiz night instead, which should be good fun, and have you all digging deep for those hidden bits of general knowledge. The forecast for next week's better, so we can have the barbecue sometime then. We're going ahead with the judo class on Wednesday afternoon at the sports centre. This is what we call a taster class, so even if you're a complete beginner, you'll be welcome. I think it was advertised on the notice board as being £5, but in fact it's 7 This includes travel to and from the centre, insurance, renting the sports kit and excellent shower facilities. So it's a good deal. Can you add your name to the list if you're interested? So, let me see. Yes, next up is Film Club Night. Uh, right, so because of a clash with the tennis tournament we've planned, which is on the 8th of October, that's Thursday, our usual film night, Film Club this week will be on Wednesday the 7th. We can't change the tennis because we've already arranged the date with three other schools. And film night will be the same time as always, but the screening won't be in the dining hall. We're moving it to the students' common room. Now we've got all the new comfortable furniture in place, we thought we'd make the most of it. This week's offering is Billy Brooks' Japanese Adventure. 
and there'll be a talk beforehand about the director, Chen Green, his art and his early years growing up in China. And lastly, I'm pleased to say that arrangements for the weekend trip have now been finalised. Looks like the weather's going to be fine too, so we should have a great time. We're going to Lake Canlock. Oh uh, yes, sorry, that's spelt C-A-N-L-O-C-K. It's set in stunning countryside and we'll make sure there's a chance for all you photographers to practice what we were studying at last week's photography club session. Can all of you who are interested stay behind after this for the details? Most especially what you'll need to take with you on the trip. Uh, but I need to tell you right now that it's an early start. The coach will be leaving from the main gates at six o'clock sharp on Saturday morning, so it probably won't appeal to the night owls among you. OK, right, I think that's just about everything. Hello, everyone. Now, I'd like you all to listen carefully to the following information about the social activities programme for this coming week. That's from the 5th to the 11th of October. Sorry, I can't give you the programme as usual, because the photocopy is not working this morning. So, if you don't mind, can you all take down notes, please? OK, let's start with Monday. As you know, we planned a barbecue, but the forecast's not looking good, so we're having a quiz night instead, which should be good fun, and have you all digging deep for those hidden bits of general knowledge. The forecast for next week's better, so we can have the barbecue sometime then. We're going ahead with the judo class on Wednesday afternoon at the sports centre. This is what we call a taster class, so even if you're a complete beginner, you'll be welcome. I think it was advertised on the notice board as being five pounds, but in fact it's seven. This includes travel to and from the centre, insurance, renting the sports kit and excellent shower facilities. So it's a good deal. Can you add your name to the list if you're interested? So, let me see. Yes, next up is Film Club Night. Uh, right, so because of a clash with the tennis tournament we've planned, which is on the 8th of October, that's Thursday, our usual film night, Film Club this week will be on Wednesday the 7th. We can't change the tennis because we've already arranged the date with three other schools. And Film Night will be the same time as always, but the screening won't be in the dining hall. We're moving it to the students' common room. Now we've got all the new comfortable furniture in place, we thought we'd make the most of it. This week's offering is Billy Brooks' Japanese Adventure, and there'll be a talk beforehand about the director, Chen Green, his art and his early years growing up in China. And lastly, I'm pleased to say that arrangements for the weekend trip have now been finalised. Looks like the weather's going to be fine too, so we should have a great time. We're going to Lake Canlock. Oh uh, yes, sorry, that's spelt C-A-N-L-O-C-K. It's set in stunning countryside and we'll make sure there's a chance for all you photographers to practice what we were studying at last week's photography club session. Can all of you who are interested stay behind after this for the details? most especially what you'll need to take with you on the trip. Uh, but I need to tell you right now that it's an early start. The coach will be leaving from the main gates at six o'clock sharp on Saturday morning, so it probably won't appeal to the night owls among you. OK, right, I think that's just about everything. You now have 30 seconds to read through and check your answers.
That is the end of part three. Listening, part four. You will hear a conversation. You will hear the conversation twice. Choose the correct answers. So, have you heard about this amazingly generous money donated by one of our ex-students, Penny? Yes, Richard Judd. It's brilliant, isn't it, Jeff? Were you on the teaching staff like me when Richard Judd was studying here? Uh, from what I remember, he left for art college the summer before I started. Looking forward to meeting him now, though. Oh, such a nice guy, really. I loved teaching him. And this donation is so generous. I mean, he's not as rich as all that. I know, but apparently he said he wanted to give the school something back for all the encouragement and help he was given when he was here. Yes, which makes me determined to make the best use of the money. Not just invest it in the bank, but not just spend it on lots of different little things either. You know, so there's nothing really to show for it. Oh, exactly, Jeff. What about the feedback from students' parents? You know, the questionnaire you sent them over half term. Oh, well, not too many surprises there. More computers, books, that sort of thing. Nothing very exciting. Although all very necessary, of course. Hmm. I know what you mean. We want something permanent that everyone would like. That's what Richard would want, I'm sure. Which is why, Penny, I was wondering about a water fountain. Everyone appreciates the calming effect of water, children especially. We could just watch it and lose all the stress. A fountain? You must be joking. Why not? Not very big or deep or anything. It wouldn't be dangerous. And if we choose the right one, it could be really attractive. No, no, I didn't mean that. But just think of all the Coke cans and crisp packets floating about in it. The kids just couldn't resist dropping stuff in. It would just become an alternative bin. Hmm. I hadn't really considered that, actually. Another idea we've been asked to consider comes from the English and Drama Department. A brilliant idea for a new school theatre. <laughs> well, I know Richard's been generous, but not that much. It would cost a fortune. I agree it would be great, and we do have the space for one. But it'll have to wait, I'm afraid. Yes, I know. I'm sure it'll happen one day. And hang on. Yes, the final idea, a sculpture, comes from the students themselves, who were asked to suggest ideas to their teachers. <laughs> what? I know. I couldn't believe it either. Quite impressive, really. But their feelings are that as Richard is an artist, well, what better way to spend the money than on a piece of art? Now that is a great idea. The students thought about having it in the art room as a kind of inspiration. I mean, it's a huge place. Oh no, it shouldn't be hidden, just for the select few. I mean, we don't all study art, do we? Depends what material it would be made of, of course. But I think somewhere like outside the school's main entrance, that would be. We'd have to decide who we'd get to make it, and the subject, of course. I love modern art, but not anything abstract. Rather something you can really see. I think that's a bit of an unfair statement, Jeff, isn't it? Some abstract art is fantastic, and some traditional stuff is just awful. It's like everything. Modern architecture, for example. Some's good, some's not. Well, anyway, that's a long way in the future. We'll need to discuss all the ideas and put them to both the teaching and student committees, and then we can make... So, have you heard about this amazingly generous money donated by one of our ex-students, Penny? Yes, Richard Judd. It's brilliant, isn't it, Jeff? Were you on the teaching staff like me when Richard Judd was studying here? Uh, from what I remember, he left for art college the summer before I started. Looking forward to meeting him now, though. Oh, such a nice guy, really. I loved teaching him. And this donation is so generous. I mean, he's not as rich as all that. 
I know, but apparently he said he wanted to give the school something back for all the encouragement and help he was given when he was here. Yes, which makes me determined to make the best use of the money, not just invest it in the bank, but not just spend it on lots of different little things either. You know, so there's nothing really to show for it. Oh, exactly, Jeff. What about the feedback from students' parents? You know, the questionnaire you sent them over half term. Oh, well. Not too many surprises there. More computers, books, that sort of thing. Nothing very exciting. Although all very necessary, of course. Hmm. I know what you mean. We want something permanent that everyone would like. That's what Richard would want, I'm sure. Which is why, Penny, I was wondering about a water fountain. Everyone appreciates the calming effect of water, children especially. We could just watch it and lose all the stress. A fountain? You must be joking. Why not? Not very big or deep or anything. It wouldn't be dangerous. And if we choose the right one, it could be really attractive. No, no, I didn't mean that. But just think of all the Coke cans and crisp packets floating about in it. The kids just couldn't resist dropping stuff in. It would just become an alternative bin. Hmm. I hadn't really considered that, actually. Another idea we've been asked to consider comes from the English and Drama Department. A brilliant idea for a new school theatre. <laughs> well, I know Richard's been generous, but not that much. It would cost a fortune. I agree it would be great, and we do have the space for one. But it'll have to wait, I'm afraid. Yes, I know. I'm sure it'll happen one day. And hang on. Yes, the final idea, a sculpture, comes from the students themselves, who were asked to suggest ideas to their teachers. <laughs> what? I know. I couldn't believe it either. Quite impressive, really. But their feelings are that as Richard is an artist, well, what better way to spend the money than on a piece of art? Now that is a great idea. The students thought about having it in the art room as a kind of inspiration. I mean, it's a huge place. Oh no, it shouldn't be hidden, just for the select few. I mean, we don't all study art, do we? Depends what material it would be made of, of course. But I think somewhere like outside the school's main entrance, that would be. We'd have to decide who we'd get to make it, and the subject, of course. I love modern art, but not anything abstract. Rather something you can really see. I think that's a bit of an unfair statement, Jeff, isn't it? Some abstract art is fantastic, and some traditional stuff is just awful. It's like everything. Modern architecture, for example. Some's good, some's not. Well, anyway, that's a long way in the future. We'll need to discuss all the ideas and put them to both the teaching and student committees, and then we can make... That is the end of part four. You now have two hours and ten minutes to complete the rest of the paper.